In the 90s, Serie A was undoubtedly the biggest and most glamorous league in world football, packed to the brim with the biggest superstars and biggest clubs. Whilst the likes of Inter Milan, Juventus, AC Milan and Roma are still on top, one club that has been left behind is Sampdoria. In the mid to late 80s, the Genoa-based club had a successful run, picking up three Coppa Italias as well as the European Cup Winners' Cup. Then, at the very beginning of the 90s boom period, they won their one and only Serie A Championship in 1991. They even reached a European Cup final in its last iteration before it was rebranded the Champions League. Some of the best players in Italian football history have donned the famous blue shirt, including names such as Juan Sebastian Veron, Ruud Hullet, Gianluca Pagluca, Clarence Sadov, Roberto Mancini, Ariel Ortega and the late great Gianluca Vialli. They've been on a downward spiral since then, resulting in a few relegations including last season and they now find themselves currently floating in mid-table in Serie B. So they are ripe for a rebuild and the bearded manager has travelled to Italy to restore this club to its former glories. However, it might be trickier than I first thought. The club is in a bad way financially, with a lot of debt that we will need to clear along the way, especially as it will impact the amount of incoming revenue made available to me through sales. Until I rake in nearly 55 million, I only get 65%. So we are going to have to be very sensible with this project. The facilities are okay, although the youth setup isn't the best to grow our youth players, so again, another challenge. And I'm also not thrilled with the makeup of the squad, as although we have some tremendously talented youngsters with high potential, too many of the squad are either here on loan or have been loaned out. We also have a number of players with serious injuries, which makes it kind of hard to get a real feel for this team. But we started swiftly, selling highly rated midfielder Gerard Yepes to AC Milan for 5 million, as well as Simone Giordano to Bournemouth for 2.5 million. We also sent Manuel De Luca to England as he signed for Norwich for 675k. To try and stamp my own identity on the team, I bought in young goalkeeper Kjell Piersman from PSV for 375k, along with Austrian centre back David Nemeth for 1.5 million. Winger Luca Zanamakia joined from Kremlin for 1.4 million, along with strikers Mikael from Salernitana for 140k and Danny Gomez from Levante for half a million. We also managed to snap up highly rated centre back Willy Camboala from Manchester United for just 200k. Our first 11 is taking shape, although this doesn't really feel like my team yet. But we are predicted to finish in the top four, so with a little push, we could go for the automatic promotion places. And maybe by then I'll have a much clearer idea of where this team can go. This season we made it through to the third round of the Coppa Italia, but an away trip to AC Milan was always a tall ask and we went out 2-1 at the San Siro in the third round. But we wanted to push for promotion this season and we got off to a great start in Serie B, winning 14 of the first 19 games and only losing 3 of them to put us top of the table heading into January. With funds tight, we did manage to snap up 18-year-old midfielder Patrick Amoko Nuama for 180k and he looks a real find. We carried on well through January and February but then really hit the wall in March, losing three on the spin and it bled through to April where we lost another couple of games. Our final home game of the season was against title rivals Pisa and Astonis Pedrola and Fabio Barini were both on the score sheet in a 3-1 win. We finished the season top of Serie B, winning the title by two points ahead of Parma, securing our promotion back to Serie A at the first time of asking. However, we are a little hamstrung once again financially, with just 300k in the transfer budget as our debt is continuing to rise. If only they had hired a manager who liked shopping in the free market. 
First off, we let all of our loan players return to their clubs and then went about removing the high earners and older players in the squad. Some of the names that left were Fabio Barini, who moved to Nantes for 500k, goalkeeper Ivan Sao, who moved to Sheffield Wednesday for 600k, and Alex Ferrari, who moved to Hellas Verona for 750k. Striker Mikael didn't really make much impact, but we did sell him for a tidy profit as he moved on for 725k. Berezinski left to Las Palmas for 1.4 million, whilst our biggest outgoing was Valerie Overe for 4.8 million. Coming into our depleted squad is goalkeeper Alessandro Russo from Sassuolo, defenders Ismail Casas and Alessandro Riccio from Lanarcos and Juventus respectively, and Alvaro Henry from Ajax. We picked up a steal with Michael Folaruncho joining our midfield on a free, along with Drissa Kamara from Parma and Daniel Maldini from AC Milan. We also topped up our attacking options with Gabriel Mishoy joining from Ajax, Eddie Salcedo joining from Inter and Lorenzo Sagabi making the move from Napoli. We also brought in a number of young players who have gone out on loan for more experience. All of these signings are completely free and I either expect them to bolster the squad or we will be able to sell them on for profit. It's just, it's the only way we can operate. We did spend a little money, however, as Latura Valente joins us from Parma for 1.4 million and Ducio Degli Innocente joins our midfield from Empoli for 700k. We also brought in young centre-back Giorgio Cittadini from Atlanta with a view to a 1.3 million move and the board made the loan move of Estanis Pedrola permanent from Barcelona along with bringing in midfielder Gabriel Piccinini for 2.3 million. It's a new look squad and first 11, one that is starting to feel like my own and the press think we will survive by the skin of our teeth. And I am hoping we prove them right. In our second season, we had a repeat performance in the Coppa Italia, heading out in the third round, this time going down 1-0 at Juventus. But we adapted to life in Serie A better than I could ever have imagined, with our young squad fearlessly playing attacking football that saw us sitting top of the table after 10 games, after our stunning result against Fiorentina. Gabriel Puccini put us 1-0 up in the first half before Eddie Salcedo doubled the lead. We ran riot in the second half with midfielder Michael fuller netting a brace in a 5-0 win. In the January transfer window, our goalkeeper Emil Aduro was snapped up by Spurs for 5.5 million, but that gave us the funds to bring in Nadir Zortia from Atlanta for 1.3 million. We were sitting pretty in second at the end of January and the good times rolled in our fierce derby with Genoa when Kasami put us 1-0 up with a calm finish, but they equalised in the 91st minute to break our hearts. Or so we thought, as in the 93rd minute Danny Gomez netted the winner to keep us firmly in the hunt for Champions League football and we managed to secure it with an astonishing third place finish, finishing ahead of heavyweights such as Napoli, Roma and Juventus. This young team has more than delivered this season and we have a huge job of rebuilding this squad to get ready for Champions League football. Our financial situation is a little better and we were given 11 million to spend this summer, but once again, we were looking mainly at the free market. We said goodbye to Pat Jim Kazani, who moved to Basel for 550k, as well as Ronaldo Vieira, who we sold to Venezia for 2.9 million. David Nemeth was moved on to Sturm Graz for 1.7 million, and Lorenzo Scarbi headed to the Bundesliga for half a million. Goalkeeper Alessandro Russo left us for 1.5 million and Ismail Casas and Leonardo Benedetti both left the club for a combined 1.2 million. Danny Gomez has also headed back to Spain on loan with a view to a permanent 8 million pound move next summer. So we have made some significant profit there and really lightened the wage bill. But before we go on to the incomings, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you for watching this video. And if you could help me out, 
please give it a little thumbs up. Just click the little button just below and it tells YouTube that you think this video is a-okay. We brought in some top quality from the free market this summer as goalkeeper Vutsov joins to become our new number one and former Tottenham man Jaffet Tanganga has also arrived to bolster the defence. In midfield, Lazara Amani joined us on a free alongside another Spurs man as Giovanni Lo Celso became our marquee signing of the summer. Faustino Andrewin joins us from Chelsea and Sebastian Esposito, the man who fired us to Serie B glory, has also returned to the club from Inter who didn't renew his contract. We did spend some money this summer as Andrea Carboni comes in at left back from Brianza for 2.5 million, whilst Martin Piero adds some midfield steal from Udinese for 900k. But our board once again came through for us as they agreed to a 3 million pound deal to bring Danish international Martin Damsgaard back to the club from Premier League Brentford. That's a hell of a bunch of good transfers and we also have like 10 really talented young players out on loan but they're for another season. We look very competitive this season but repeating our incredible third place finish might be a stretch but the media think we'll be comfortably mid-table. Oh and that 34 million pound debt we started with is now nearly completely gone and hopefully the Champions League money will completely wipe it out. We entered the Champions League this season being drawn in the league phase alongside Wolfsburg, RB Salzburg, Red Star Belgrade, Ajax, Man City, Olympic Marseille, Inter Milan and Villarreal and we had a pretty good campaign. The highlight of which was when Man City came to visit and Giovanni Lo Celso opened the scoring in the first half. City hit back from the penalty spot, but Sebastiano Esposito scored a 96th minute winner to give us a famous victory. Overall, we won four, drew one and lost three of our games to finish in the playoff spots, but unfortunately, we were knocked out with relative ease by FC Porto 4-1 on aggregate. Our taste for cup competition this year was addictive. We found ourselves in the Super Copa this season facing Inter Milan in the semi-final where a 90th minute winner from Mikel Damsgaard saw us through to the final where we took on AC Milan. Eddie Salcedo gave us an early lead before Olivia Giroud nodded an equaliser. Carboni lashed us into the lead before half time before Salcedo kept his call from the spot to give us a 3-1 lead. A mistake allowed Milan to score a late goal leading to a nervy finish but we held our nerve and lifted the Super Copper, our first trophy of this save. And like I said, it was addictive. In the Coppa Italia this season, we made it through to the semi-final, once again facing AC Milan. And after a 1-1 draw at the San Siro, it was that man Damsgaard again who drilled home the only goal to send us to another final. This time, we faced Atlanta but fell behind to an early goal from Moise Keane before Fabio De Pauli equalised. Massimo Zilli put Atlanta in front a few minutes later, but Eddie Salcedo equalised on the stroke of half-time. In the second half, Gabriel Puccini lit up the final with a glorious strike to put us ahead, and Eddie Salcedo wrapped things up with his second of the match and 30th of the season to see us lift the Coppa Italia. So that's two trophies this season, but could we beat our third place finish from last year? Our newly strengthened team hit the ground running with Giovanni Lo Celso netting the winner against AS Roma on his debut. After a great first half of the season, we were firmly in the top four and more significantly, we had removed the debt from the club. And then we bolstered our budget when our holding midfielder Michael Fullerunsho headed to Al Ain in Saudi Arabia for 19 million. Our January business was excellent as we bought in Elia Capril from Napoli for 1.9 million, former Chelsea man Malang Saar from Frankfurt for 1.6 million, Ahmad Diallo from Manchester United for 9 million, and then secured Ryan Gravenbach on loan for the rest of the season. And we were relatively solid before hitting our stride in the final stretches of the season, winning eight of our final 10 games to finish second in the table, but a long way off from challenging for the title. 
two cups and a second place finish means we are well in position to make that extra push but it's going to take a big summer to do that. The board have provided us with 25 million in the transfer budget and as always we are looking to move out some players for some decent profit. Goalkeeper Sveslav Vutsov left for Saudi Arabia for 9.25 million along with defender Latoura Valente who moved to Al Khalif for 10.25 million. Lazara Amini also headed for Saudi for 1.7 million and Udinese signed Alessandro Riccio for 4.3 million and finally Fabio De Pali moved to Frosnoy for 5.25 million. And on deadline day, Jaffet Tenganga made it clear he wanted to return to England and he joined West Ham for just shy of 10 million. So we had some money to spend this summer and we brought in some fantastic Italian talent with Cesar Cassidy joining from Chelsea for 3.7 million along with Tommaso Baldanzi who arrived from Atlanta for 10 million. Nicola Cavlini joins as backup keeper for 3 million and Spanish wonder kid Adam Asnu arrived from Bayern for just 1.3 million. We strengthened at centre back as Thomas Araujo arrived from Napoli for 6.5 million and we also bought in young defender Beraldo on loan from PSG. But as always we hit the free market bringing in centre back Valentin Antov, full back Alvaro Fernandez and striker Marco Nasti to bolster the squad. But our star signing was of Portuguese winger Jota who left Saudi Arabia and could be one hell of an acquisition. The media have us down as ninth, but this first 11 looks capable of challenging for the title. Well, in my opinion at least. Our participation in the Champions League this season wasn't particularly great as we were drawn in the league phase of Copenhagen, Red Star Belgrade, PSV, Porto, Benfica, Valencia and European heavyweights Manchester United and Real Madrid. We struggled, only winning twice, which meant we finished a disappointing 28th and failed to qualify for the next round. Could we find salvation in the defence of the Coppa Italia? Unfortunately not, as we crashed out in the semi-final stages, bowing out 4-2 on aggregate to Inter Milan. But in our defence of the Super Coppa, we made it to the final once again, as we beat Juventus in the semi-final, setting up a showdown with Inter Milan. Despite Inter taking the lead through João Felix, we hit back through Nadir Zortia and that man, Eddie Salcedo, to retain the Italian Super Coppa. So we retained one of our cups this year, but could we be adding any more trophies to the cabinet? We started the season in tremendous form, not losing a game until the end of November. The January transfer window was a big one for us as defender Valentin Antov moved to China for 13.25 million and another free summer arrival Alvaro Hernandez headed for Saudi Arabia for 8.5 million. Long serving winger Astanis Pedrola finally left the club heading for Lorient in Ligue 1 for 15 million. Martin Payero also departed heading back to his native Argentina for 2.8 million. Coming into the squad, we replaced our defensive outgoings with the signing of Marco Pellegrini from AC Milan for 4.9 million, as well as midfielder Fabio Moretti from Juventus. Then I thought I'd pulled off one of the signings of the save, securing Facundo Torres for just 6.75 million. But due to registration rules, he can't play until next season. So, lessons learned. But we needed something to keep us in the title hunt and I was shocked when the board sanctioned the 39 million signing of Italian striker Wilfred Nonto from Spurs to spearhead our attack. And he did just that, notching 10 goals as we finished the season on a 14 game unbeaten streak, which meant we finished top of the Serie A table for the first time in over 30 years. But we haven't won the league. Because you see, a new rule came into Serie A in 2022. That means if two teams finish on the same points, the league isn't decided by goal difference. It goes to a playoff. 
So we welcomed AC Milan in the first leg and Jota, who finished the season with 19 assists, stooped to head us into the lead in first half injury time. Fabio Moretti coolly fired home our second from the spot before Eddie Salcedo polished the game off in injury time to put one hand on the trophy. But back at the San Siro, Milan threw everything at us and stormed into a two-goal lead before half-time, reducing the aggregate score to just one goal. Until Pacini tapped home a rebound and Casade equalised to seal a 2-2 draw, a 5-3 aggregate win and crown Sampdoria as Serie A champions. We leave this club with no debt, a host of young, exciting Italian stars, another Champions League campaign to look forward to and the Serie A championship safely in the trophy cabinet. So we did it in four seasons. We took Sampdoria from Serie B all the way back to the top of the Serie A table. Let me know in the comments below who you thought the best signing of this rebuild was or maybe suggest another club that you think I could or should rebuild. There's a link to the Discord in the uh, notes below this video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, it all helps. I appreciate it, I appreciate you. I have been The Bearded Manager and I will see you next time.